Welcome back everyone. I thought I'd, um, it's a rainy day here in Auckland and I thought I'd just go out to the garage and talk about these boost converters and what I'm planning to do. So what I've been doing is while I've been testing the power wall, I've been using this 600 watt boost converter to charge the batteries back up again. So this is rated up to 60 volts on the input and up to 80 volts on the output. So I need about 83 point something volts. So this is this goes over the 83 mark, um, but it seems to sit um, at 83 okay. However, it's not as powerful as obviously its big brother, which is the 900 watt version here. Um, I'm trying to talk loud enough because it's raining and hopefully you can still hear me. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been using this. I started off with using this one, but ended up blowing it up. So I think I did that with a combination of two things, not cooling it enough, as well as um, trying to pull too many amps uh, off it. So what I ended up doing was I hit, I've got three of these, so that's the first two that I got, and I ended up buying a third one. This one here is the cheaper version of, the t of well it's the same version, it's the same cost, but it looks like it's the cheaper version. As you see, it's got half as much components as these other two ones here. So, and this one here um, is, it comes with a heatsink, I've taken it off currently. And what I've been finding is that this one here, with the less component version, um, just doesn't keep up with the other two. The, um, the voltage is stable, but the current is up and down, up and down. So if you're thinking about buying a 600 watt boost converter, don't buy this one, buy these other two. So what I did was, I, as I said, I, I ended up blowing this one up. The fault with this one here was the power MOSFET. Um, it uses almost the identical one to this one here. So given that this one here um, is not that stable, what I thought I'd do is I'd take it apart and unsolder the power MOSFET that obviously used to go in here. What I did was I soldered that back into this one here, and now this one here is back working again. So that's one accomplishment. Um, I've ordered a, uh, another power, a, another five power MOSFETs so that I can fix this one here back up again and get this one here going. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in other videos, I ended up, my 900 watt version, which is this one here, I ended up blowing up its power MOSFET, which is this one here. This is 150 amps, uh, 175 volts, I think it is. It's quite a big power MOSFET, but the problem with this, this whole unit, is the cooling. So this, if we look at the, the new one, so I've just got this the other day and I've just tested it. This one here, they've, they've got the power MOSFET with the diode connected up to this very thin heatsink. And this is the heatsink here that's off the other unit. And as you can see, it's tiny. And what happens, what, why, this, the, um, why this one here blew up was mainly because um, it just got too hot and it, it popped. So I was pulling about 13 amps off it and it died. So I can't, what I can't remember though, however, is whether it was 13 amps on the input or it was 13 amps on the output. Uh, I just can't remember that. So it, it's a bit of a, a pain because that would help me identify exactly at what point this thing blew up. But either way, the only thing that seems to be broken on the board is the power MOSFET. So I've ordered another one that will hopefully be here in a few weeks. So in the meantime, what I've got is this new one. Um, and I've tested this and this works fine. So I'd like to use this um, because it's 900 watts and I really like the, um, the digital display and digital um, settings so that I can make it kind of very precise rather than using these silly um, little turn um, pots over here. So this one here is obviously 900 watts. I'd much rather use this unit here. It obviously can put out a lot more power. However, the cooling solution on this is just crap. It's just, these ones here are better. This uses a much thicker and heavier heatsink, where this one here just uses a very thin um, heatsink. It's good because it goes up to 120 volts on the output. However, um, and I'd highly recommend this unit. Um, it just works really well. However, if you're trying to use it at high current or near its limits of its current, it's just, you need to do something about its cooling. It's just, the cooling is not good enough. And I think what happened here is the um, power MOSFET got way too hot and then ended up um, blowing up or popping or whatever it does. No smoke came out, but it just stopped working and it blew the fuse. So this unit here is all going. 
what I'm planning to do is fix or upgrade the cooling solution. 